you directed my questions are on the side so that's why i'm no worries, no worries. uh you directed some of the what's now the most famous uh episode early episodes like ice could you have imagined then how popular the show would have become at that time and is now even more so you know it's interesting um just to give you a little bit of my backstory i had um directed a little bit of movie when i was younger and came out to hollywood and tried to get some television work to whatever happened happened there and finally got a, on a show called jump street and met glenn morgan and jim wong mm -hmm. and they um we became fast friends and along came the x files and so they went to chris carter and they, it was right in the early stages of x files so it was the first season of x files and they were actually it was a situation where they, they were having problems getting the show um getting the show shot in the days allowed because they were doing 10 11 day shows the ratings weren't so great the show was on the verge of uh, maybe being canceled um there was issues with jillian david and 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 jillian's performances all kinds of crazy stuff was happening and i had just basically come back from romania and directed these two crazy uh charlie band things um, called transfers four and five and i basically went there you know trying to have, have any kind of life at all and i survived that experience and i came back to um, and that was right, right after they had the Ceausescu uh, revolution. Mm -hmm. So it was really a situation where I really kind of went there and I just had a new baby and my wife and I would, you know, we're doing our best to kind of keep it afloat. So I wanted to do this. So, but Chris didn't want to hire David Nutter because I worked for Stephen Cannell. I was a Cannell guy. I know him well. So, so basically they hired, there was a show that came and one of Chris's directors directed it. And the one script that Jim and, Walt, Jim and Glenn had written, and they weren't happy with the director. And they said, Chris, you're Ellis. So he said, okay, we'll get David Nutter to do it. So I got, I got on this episode and they hand, I handed an ice script. And it was just like, wow. It touched me, emotionally affected me, it, it moved me, it did all kinds of great things. And it was really the first time David, that Glenn and Jim, who wrote really the strongest episode in the beginning of the series, where they were able to put some more emotion back in the end, allow the characters to have some emotional baggage or an emotional life. And this is really Jillian's first episode of really, uh, really getting a chance to kind of like show her stuff emotionally. So, and also the situation which they're having lots of issues with respect to getting a show done. And so they came, the head of Fox, Charlie Goldstein, head of Fox production, Charlie Goldstein called me and went, and he met me and he said, listen, you know, we, we, only, gonna, we only have nine days to do this show. But they haven't been able to do a show in the nine days. And I was like, all should pull a piece of vinegar. And I said, well, I haven't shot a show in eight. I've only shot shows in seven and eight days. I'm sorry. I never, I, 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 sorry. They wanted to shoot an eight day show. And I said, I only had episodes of six and seven days. I've never had eight days to shoot a show. So after Romania, I felt like I could slay a dragon. So I got, came in there, got the script, and I said, well, let's get two stunt guys from the beginning of the, of the season. They were two stunt guys that beat the shit out of each other. And so they were worried about stunt guys directing and all the whole thing. And, and they're also worried that, you know, it's David Nutter from the Cannell show, but Chris said, okay, Glenn and, Jim, Glenn and Jim, and I got on the show and we started to sort of make it happen. And I went and met, I met Jillian, I went to her trailer and prep and I told her how, because I've watched some stuff she had done, I was really impressed with her natural form and her, and her something I hadn't seen before and a leading actress. And I kind of walked over and introduced myself and said, uh, I just want to tell you that I'm really honored to be working with you and I look forward to working with you. I've seen a lot of this, I've seen everything that you've shot so far and I can't wait to get started. And she kind of looked at me and she said, you know, I needed that. And so that was a good situation of creating a relationship there and spent a lot of time with David as well. And the great thing about, about the ice episode was really, it was really not a, it wasn't one of those situations where they walk in the room and they shoot a master and close-ups and coverage and get out. It was a real, active sequence in a, in a continuing uh, set. So the situation where I could kind of shoot a little bit differently. I could shoot, you know, longer takes and, and get a lot more of a dynamic uh, um, blocking and so forth and, and so forth and, and make that much stronger. And so we, we all worked together, to, to, it turned out really so well. And I just knew it was so, it was so powerful. And, I, and, and we all just knew that that show was something special. I remember, uh, uh, John Barley told me Chris was coming to visit the set for the first time. And he said, well, John Barley, the DP said, well, you know, Chris is going to come. You, you guys be a couple more hours. We, we'll go two hours in OT. And I went, oh, no, I get all nervous, right? <laughs> so Chris comes on the set 
right when we were shooting a sequence, which was a what's the most difficult what was the most difficult scene to shoot in that sequence? Holding the dog down when the dog's barking and get the worm coming out of him. So I'm on set doing a small set until where Kips Kips comes on set. And I'm in the middle, I like to get there and get and do stuff. So I basically was with with with, with them. Uh, that I happened working. I walked over, hey guys, how you doing? And I went back to my work, whatever. And he just kind of watched me and he said, okay, I guess he knows what he's doing. And saw that I was very much involved. And, but it, was, but it was really a situation in which they really came, to, David and June really came, came, came in for it. It really made it special. And that episode was so very strong. I just knew it was something different. I know a lot of people said that was where the episode was kind of the turn to turn the series in a different way. I but uh, I, did, I knew it was something special. And then, of course, after that script, I get Beyond the Sea, which was, which was just so, so important and so, so special to me to direct, which is some, another opportunity to work with Jillian, get her to get a chance to um, um, shine and, um, and work with Brad Dorff was, was magical. And that was the cheapest X-Files ever made. So everyone knows. Yeah, that was just before, we shot the X-Files in the first three seasons. The reason it was dark, because we didn't have money to see anything. That's why. I love that. Yeah. We interviewed Stephen Mark and he said that, that because there was no light, he decided to just have everybody throw flashlights into it. And that's what he did for the rest of the series. Oh yeah, I was, I, I was the person that introduced the, um, the, the Xenon flashlight. I worked with Ronnie Charters on a show called um, um, Superhero, African American Superhero at night. Man, Man, Mantis. Okay. With Carl Lumley, we shot that in Vancouver. Right. So Roddy Charter brought a, a, a Xenon flashlight to the set, and I said, "I'm taking it to the X Files." So the second thing to the X Files at the Arecibo um, uh, Observatory. Mm -hmm. I find the guy having frozen. I brought out the flashlights, and from then on, that was that was the world of X Files. Okay. Well, it was great that I was there before the money really had gotten. Before the money came aboard, we were there because of love of what we did. And I think we made some special shows because of that, the limitations. What was your biggest challenge? Like you said, there wasn't money at that time. Fox hadn't come in with all the money. What was your biggest challenge as a director and a producer? Um, I guess remembering what made the show special. Uh, I had um, direct one, one story I have to say is that um, David, uh, in the third season, I basically did the first, first I did the uh, first season, second season, and then I went and directed a pilot at the beginning of the third season, which was the uh, Space Above and Beyond. Sorry, the end of the second season, I went and directed this Space Above and Beyond with Glenn and Jim. Yeah. And I left the show, and then when I came back for the third season um, to direct episodes, um, it was a different attitude on the set. And when I left after the second season, I did a going away party and we were all happy and clam, and happy as clam. It was all happening, it was all whatever. Just before it really had exploded, but we were all very happy with what we were doing. When I got back after that period of the show starting to get a little heat, there was lots of attitudes going around. You know, David felt that you know, he and Chris were the hardest working guys on the show and everyone having their growing pains and, the, you know, David and Jen weren't talking to each other and they weren't talking to each other, that guy wasn't talking to each other, whatever. And I was like, I came back to this situation. I left, I left, I left Oz and came back to, uh, 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 to, uh, I came back to Hill Street. Um, <laughs> and, um, and, and it was, it was a situation where I couldn't imagine all was happening. And then I was given this Darren Morgan script, Clyde Breckman. I love it. And I was like, and I, I, I saw some of the scripts after I left who were, some were quite good, some were not quite, quite strong. But this Clyde Breckman script, I thought was the best script ever on the X-Files at that point. And so on a Friday night, when we had talked, talked to them to hiring uh, Peter Boyle, on Friday night, it was the first Saturday night of shooting of that episode. And so it was a situation in which um, I, uh, we brought, had to bring Peter, had to fly Peter Boyle in on Friday because we're at a certain location that we couldn't go back to. So we had to come in and do one shot, one scene, and then stay the whole weekend. And and he, he didn't really like that too much. And I, and I heard he was very difficult to work with yeah. at that time. And so he, um, the first scene we, his first scene we shot with him was David and Jen and Ralph doing something and all of a sudden the closet door opens, he pops out of the closet door and he walks the camera and says, I see, he's seen something, I had a vision. 
right? And so there's a situation where he needs to have a second action because actually the action would be the first action. Right. And second action is him opening the door. Right, right. And so um, I call action and Peter walks out the door. And I said, oh, sorry, cut, 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 sorry, Peter, da, 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 da. He says, okay, but don't let it happen again. Ooh. I said, okay. So um, that was the end of that night. And at the end of the night, I went to David and Jillian and I looked, looked at both of them, set them down. And I said, listen, guys, this is the best script you've had on this show. On Monday, when we start working, we're going to make something special and have fun doing it. And so, and I had left, I had left in that feeling with everybody. We were that close when I left after the, after the second, the end of the second, first, first half of the second season. And then I went to Peter and I said, Peter, uh, can I get my see you this weekend? We can talk. So I went to saw Peter and he was, and he was like, okay, I'll, we'll, we'll come. So I went to his hotel room and I basically reminded him why he did the show. Why are you here? Because the script was so great. But his wife didn't want him to come, didn't want him to be away so long. He didn't, he was upset about that. He was nervous about all kinds of things. But most importantly, he was nervous because the character kills himself at the end. Um, and lots of issues with that. Gotcha. And so I also had to kind of tell him the popularity of the show. Because at that time, Finland was excited. Finland newspaper, Finland news would come visit the show, or Denmark. I mean, all kinds of crazy places would come visit the show, and the popularity was really starting to explode. So I sat down with Peter, so I, I never wanted to do this ever. So I sat down with Peter and I told him about the show, how it's happening, da da da, da whatever, and how I'm this, I'm this hot, hot director, or whatever. And he goes, Oh, so you're hot shit, huh? And I said, Well, yeah. <laughs> and so what was great was after that meeting on Monday morning, we had probably, we worked more hours that week than most. We had the best time of all we were having the show. We laughed, we worked hard, and it was just magical. Peter Boyle uh, got his only Emmy for that show. Yep. Never got an Emmy on Emmy Rose Raymond. And he said at the end of when he um, um, won his award, he said, I want to thank the winking director. <laughs> that was someone that my mother, she used to be, do hair for ladies. And she always wink at them and talk to them, whatever, that kind of thing. And I, I got fixed this winking name from her. And so he wanted to thank the winking director. So he won an Emmy. And then, of course, Darren Warren won an Emmy as well. Awesome. And um, it was just, it was one of those, you know, just a special, special time in my life. Yeah. Do you have a favorite memory from working on the show? Well, I think I, I discussed a couple of them there to you, which is I think were special. The, the Clyde Brockman, yeah. Clyde Brockman experience and the ice experience. Um, the on sea was a special memory, of course. Um, probably, um, I, I probably couldn't distill it onto one moment. Um, but I, I, to go back, I, I have to say that that time I went and spoke to Jillian at a, tra at a trailer was something that I really hope, I, I think I made a connection to, to her, which is really great. And I'll tell you a secret. Um, uh, the second season when uh, I left to go do the series, went to do this part for Jim and Glenn, Bob Goodman every year would have you know, crew pictures. So he took a picture of me, a cardboard cutout, and did a life-size picture of me for the thing. So what was funny was that at the end of that evening, at the end of that day, they did the pictures. Jillian ran over, grabbed my, 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 my cardboard cutout apparently. And I was told she put it up in her living room. <laughs> the whole rest of the couple seasons, because I guess you'd wake up in the morning, wake up, whatever, and see this guy who like, believed in her and oh. used it. But if you want to go to me, David, you know, Jillian's got her, did her cardboard cutout in her living room by her piano, it's the strangest thing. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it, what was great, it was funny. Um, we were at Dave West Sound and we just mixed, we just mixed um, maybe Beyond the Sea. Mm. And I said that, I was there with Jim McGlynn, I said, guys, it'll never get better than this moment. You know, it was, it was, that, it was that thing where I knew it would be, I knew better things would come, whatever, but I knew that the, the distill, distillation of that one moment where it was just taking off and it was so special. I just knew that was, that was, that was the time. And that was probably, that, that moment was a very special time for me. Why, why do you think the show is still relevant? Like I'm an original fan, I'm still a fan. Why do you think the show is still relevant 25 plus years later as now you have new generations of people appreciating the show as, as ever, as they did in the 90s? What's interesting to me is in the 90s, because I left the show and did other things, people would come to me and they'd say, 
hey, let's go do another, let's do the next ER. Let's do something like wild and crazy like the ER. And so I, I, I'd look at people and they'd say this thing to me, I'd say to them, the wild and crazy and weird stuff isn't only ER special. What made ER special was this. We created the real world. We created real settings. We created outside your door. We created people that were real people, you, people that were passionate and compassionate for what they did. You may would not always understand what David and Jillian were talking about, or George Clooney or Anthony Edwards for that matter, but you saw that they cared about what they did and it mattered to them. And I think once you get, get that going in a show and create a show with that type of a sensibility, especially like in, for instance, the teasers and so forth, whatever that may be, which was so important, is that once you set the real world in, in, someone's, in someone's living room, then people begin to care, people lean in and they begin to care. And once they begin to care, then you got them. And once they begin to care, then you throw the crazy stuff at them. Then you throw the surprise at them. Then you throw the thing at them and it affects them in a whole different way. It isn't just, it, 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 it absorbs them. I mean, the best example of that for me was the, uh, the Red Wedding and the videos that the end people watching, you have a chance to see the videos of people watching, watching what happened. But getting a chance to know that, that that's what touched people, that's what made the show special, yeah. was making it real. Not, not anything else. And I think that's the thing that people don't understand is that the more reality based you can make it, the more, more, more and, and it was smart. Nowadays, a lot more, a lot more sparks and a lot more visual effects, not a lot of smart. If you could say anything to the fans of the show over the last 27 years, what would it be? Um, We're asking this question to everybody. I guess I would say that um, how lucky we were that you found our show, but how lucky you were that you found our show. Because it's a show that really had high, high aspirations, high expectations, and it's a show that really wanted you to think, but also feel and care. And I think that those elements of telling a story are the basic uh, ingredients that are more important than anything else. And hopefully people that, I, I, I guarantee people in, the, in, in our industry that have been involved in this or watch the show are better writers or better this because of it.